reducing dependencies. A task is either a predecessor or a successor. This means that a task either comes before or after another task. When two tasks have a timing relationship, they are a predecessor-successor pair. The predecessor's task schedule will have an effect on the successor's task schedule, especially if you're using the auto-schedule relationship. A dependency in project is defined as a timing relationship between two tasks in a project, or tasks that are a predecessor-successor relationship pair. These two tasks depend on each other. In project 2013, you create a dependency link. This link will cause a task to either occur before or after another task, or to begin or end during the duration of another task. In other words, it gives them a timing relationship. Whenever you create a dependency, it is a finish to start relationship by default. This means one task must finish before another begins. If you want that type of dependency, then your life just got a whole lot easier. If it is not the type that you want, after you create the dependency link, you can edit it to change the type or build in lag or lead time, or essentially time in between a pair of tasks. Let's learn to create a finish to start dependency. Make sure you're in the Gantt chart view and the two tasks you want to link are both visible. You'll also need to make sure that tasks actually have a duration. So if you're using this example, enter a duration for one day for each of these tasks. You can do this by typing one into the duration box and pressing enter. Click on the predecessor's taskbar or the tasks you want to come first by clicking on the blue bar. Now hold control and click and drag this task to the successor's taskbar or the second task that you want to link it to. When you do, you'll see a line drawn in the chain link symbol. You'll also see a little box notifying you of the finish to start link that you've created. When you release your mouse, you'll see a new column added. You'll also note that the successor task has the number of the predecessor task in the predecessor column. In this case, in task number 5, you have the ID of task number 4 because that's what comes before it. There's also an arrow showing the relationship between the tasks, as you can see on the right of the page. You can also create dependencies in the task information dialog box, or use this box to modify a relationship between tasks. To do this, double click on the name of the successor task so the dialog box appears. Click on the predecessors tab. In the ID field, type the ID number for the predecessor task. In this case, we're going to make the predecessor for this task create outline. This task is 2, and 2 is its ID. Press tab. The task name and the default finish start dependency type are entered for you automatically. Click the type field and click on the downward arrow to view the dependency types. Then click the appropriate dependency. The dependency types are finish to start, we've already covered this dependency, it's the easiest one to work with. Start to finish, this relationship means that the start of one task determines the finish of another. Start to start, the start of one task also determines the start of another task. Finish to finish. The finish of one task determines the finish of another. Click OK. Lag time occurs when you add time to either the start or the finish of a predecessor task. This causes a gap in the timing. Lead time, on the other hand, is when you subtract time from either the start or the finish of the predecessor task. This causes an overlap between two tasks. To set lag time or lead time, double click the name of a task to open the task information dialog box. And click on the predecessors tab. The field where you set lag or lead time is in the lag column on the far right. This is located to the right of the dependency type column that we learned about just before. To add lag, click up to a positive number. Or for lead time, decrease to a negative number. Remember, days are the default timing. You can change this to accommodate your timings. Linking tasks is defined as establishing a connection between tasks in separate schedules so that the task changes in the first schedule are reflected in the second. It is also to establish dependencies between project tasks. In addition, we're going to learn how to link external tasks, such as those within another project. When you insert a hyperlink into your project, you create a task that can be used to represent timing and or costs of another project or subproject in your plan. That said, you have to bring over timing and cost information yourself. It cannot be linked in from another project. To insert a hyperlink, select the blank cell in the task name column where you want the link to appear. Right click and choose hyperlink from the drop down menu. Type a name for the hyperlink in the text to display box. Next, select the appropriate file or web page, such as another project file. Click OK. A hyperlink symbol will now appear in the indicator field on the left. 
Just click on the symbol to open the file. Task Inspector is a feature that lets you know what is driving the timing of your tasks. Since the timing of your tasks are affected by certain conditions, Task Driver will help you recognize these conditions. It's kind of like when you play a game of golf. Several conditions can affect your game such as weather, your mood, and even your health at the time. The conditions that affect the timing of a project can include actual start date or assignments. This happens when you have entered a start date for a task, or you have assigned a resource to a task and the resource is not yet available. Constraints. This condition can happen when you apply a constraint to a task that won't allow it to start until a certain date. Dependency relationships. A predecessor task can cause change to a task's timing. To view the task drive information, select the task that you want to use for the task inspector. Then go to the inspect drop down box and choose inspect task. The task inspector opens up on the left side of the window for the task that we selected. It lets us know some information about the task. With the task inspector open, we can click on other tasks to inspect them. To close the task inspector, click on the X on the task inspector section. Whereas task inspector lets you see your task drivers in a table format, task path will show you task drivers by highlighting them in the Gantt chart. To see your task paths, go to the Gantt chart view. If you're not already there, go to the Gantt chart format tab and under the task path button, select the task path that you want to see. The choices that you will see are predecessors, driving predecessors, successors, and driving successors. We're going to choose predecessors. If there are any predecessors, you can see them highlighted in this form.